Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a horse's mane in graphite. Now this very much depends on the layering process. Now this is something that I talk about in all of my tutorials here on YouTube. You can see here that I'm using my eye makeup applicator to apply a thin layer of graphite to my paper so that I've got some tone down first before I start using my pencils and my erasers. Now here, I'm also not putting down a solid layer of a dark graphite powder. I've got variations of the lights and the darks, hinting at where my main highlights and shadows are for the main clumps of hair on the mane. Now once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start working with my graphite pencils. Now just like when applying the graphite powder, using the pencils is all about the variations in the tonal values. So you can see here that I'm not using a darkest pencil, you know, my 9Bs straight away. I'm building up that depth and the dark layers in stages. Now one big tip, and you're going to see this throughout this stage, is look at how short my pencil strokes are in relation to how long the actual hair is on the horse's mane. Now this is my own horse, my shy horse. He was only a baby when this photograph was taken, but the hair individual strands are significantly longer than what I'm creating here. Now that's deliberate. Now the reason being, when we look at the reference photo of a horse's mane, you can't actually see one strand of hair that starts from the base of the skin where it attaches to the neck all the way down to the end of that hair strand. Because there are so many individual hairs, thousands of hairs there, everything gets overlapped on something else and that hair becomes broken up. So this is why I like to keep my pencil strokes shorter. Now obviously here though, my pencil strokes are significantly longer than when I work on the face. So I do need to adjust my pencil technique and the length of those pencil strokes to make sure that I replicate the difference in fur or hair textures. And that's gonna be the case with any animal that we're drawing. But what is important is, as I say, I can't stress it enough, I don't have one continuous pencil stroke from the top of where the mane starts all the way down to where it finishes. Because we can end up with hair that looks a little bit more like spaghetti. Now this technique that I'm showing here with keeping your pencil strokes a little bit shorter but still moving it in the flow and direction the way that that hair curves would also be how I would approach longer hair for a people portrait. Now by working with the pencils in this way combined with the layering structure that we've got here we can then pair up and match the pencil strokes so that it looks like in our portrait the hair is long. Obviously we don't want start and stop points between our pencil strokes so you can see now that where I'm building up the use of subtle layers, I haven't again jumped in with those darkest pencils. I'm building up those layers gradually. This makes the mane look soft, but now I'm starting to lengthen my existing pencil strokes. So the fact that I've mapped that in to start with, I'm already hinting at the curve, the flow of that mane. And now I'm just going to continue and exaggerate the length of those pencil strokes. But I've worked on this in two separate sections just the importance of not doing one continuous pencil stroke from the top to the bottom is what can make the main on your drawing look even more realistic. Now here you saw there that it faded into the zoomed out version of this clip and that's because I had to work on the chest first. Now I want to keep this little video focusing on the main but I do have to make sure that the neck of the horse was drawn in first because all of this longer mane is then overlapping and sitting on top of the neck that is behind it. Now I talk about this in all of my videos here on YouTube and my real-time tutorials on Patreon, which if you would like to draw along to this horse tutorial, then that's available there now. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list. It's also got a voiceover that I'm doing while I'm drawing, so every process is explained in the moment thoroughly. It's a very step-by-step -step lesson and a perfect one to draw along to. But I do have to make sure that I work with the right order. If you notice any part of the horse, any animal that looks like it's behind the hair, try to get that drawn in first and then overlap the hair on top. That's going to help to build up that three-dimensional look of your portrait. Now again here I'm starting to add the extra section to the end of the mane, making sure that I've got the length of this mane correct for that horse. This is very important and obviously it's something that's going to vary from each individual horse. So if you're working on pet portraits, the length of the mane is something to pay very close attention to. So the last stage here, once I'm happy with the pencil strokes that I've added and I've built up my depth, I need to reinforce my contrast and start adding in some of the lighter hairs on the top of the mane. 
Now the contrast is something that I talk about in all tutorials and this is where your highlights, are they bright enough and are your shadows dark enough? So where I'd been using my graphite pencils to build up my darker values, I was happy with that. I knew I had to now add in more contrast by hyping up the highlights. So here I'm using my Tombow Mono Eraser, the same technique that I was using with my pencils. They're not spaghetti individual hair strokes, but this is helping to build up the next layer of depth. These are the hairs that are sitting more on top that are catching more of that light. Now I do find that the Tombow Mono Eraser works best if the graphite has been applied in the right way to start with, otherwise it can be very hard to lift that graphite off the paper. And this is one area that I really did focus the real time tutorial on, which as I said is available now on Patreon. So I do really hope that this video has been useful. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if this video was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I do also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. Here is a photograph of my finished portrait. And as you can see, I really have focused on the values. The dark sections are nice and dark, but then the highlights are also really bright. This is what's going to make a portrait in graphite look three dimensional. So I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.